Likewise, we come to the point of Judges 19, a very infamous chapter in the book of Judges, a chapter that when I first preached on this a couple of years ago, I had a hard time preaching through this. This is where you have the Levite, and he meets up with his wife or his concubine. There's a little bit of disagreement there in the translations. It could be his wife, could be his concubine. She was unfaithful to him. She had committed adultery. That's going to be important later. So she goes, she commits adultery. She goes back to her father, but the Levite comes and convinces her to come back with him. Eventually, they end up in the, the town where the Benjamin, Benjaminites have claim. This is the territory of the Benjaminites. And so they end up in this city here. No one's welcoming them. Eventually, though, a man welcomes them into their home. You've got to remember that in those days, there were no inns, there were no hotels or anything like that. If you were traveling through a land, there was no place for you to stay except on the kindness of other people. This is why it was part of the law of God that the Israelites were to show this kindness. If you see someone coming into the land, you are to be hospitable to them. You are to offer your home to them because just as you were a sojourner in the land of Egypt, you should be kind to people traveling through your land. And so, again, at first, nobody is welcoming to the Levi and his wife or his concubine, but eventually this man does. But then, when it comes to the evening, when darkness falls upon this land, we see that the men of this area here, they go to where this person is living and they demand the Levite and they demand his concubine because they want to abuse them both physically and in other ways all night. The man calls out to these people and says, don't do this evil thing. Here, take my daughters, take his concubine, but don't do this to this Levite, please. Remember, Levites were a part of the priestly class. And you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, doesn't this sound kind of familiar? Yes, this is exactly what happened with Lot and the angels at Sodom and Gomorrah. Here you see the people of God acting just like the people at Sodom and Gomorrah. But see, there the angels strike the people of Sodom and Gomorrah with blindness. Whenever they try to reach for the door, the angels strike them with blindness and they are unable to unleash their evil intentions. It doesn't go that way in Judges 19. In Judges 19, we see what happens when God doesn't intervene. The man takes the Levite's concubine or his wife and throws her out to the men. And they have their way with her the rest of the night. And so this woman is humiliated and abused to death. She dies the next day. That's how evil these men were. And the Levite takes her. And he sends a message to everybody else throughout the, all the territories that they can see the evil that's taken place here. Now, I point out the fact that this woman had committed adultery, and I don't want you to miss the point here. I'm not going to sit here and say that this woman deserved what happened to her, but by the law of God, because she had committed adultery, she deserved to be dead. She deserved to be killed. God's law says in the time of Israel that if you commit adultery, the penalty for adultery was death. But the way that it was, it was death by stoning. So she would have died a relatively quick death. She had committed adultery. She did deserve to die. But if she had been obedient to the law of God, or in other words, if Israel had been obedient to the law of God, her death would have been relatively quick and relatively painless. But Israel didn't do that. She, did not, she was not brought before anybody. She wasn't stoned to death. Because it was a time of lawlessness. And Judges 19 makes a point of showing that. So instead, what happens? Rather than falling into the justice of God, she falls into lawless men. And she suffers a fate much worse than if, she had, if the people of Israel had upheld God's law. And so the important lesson for us to learn from this, and this is a hard lesson because we don't want to hear this. Your flesh this day does not want to hear this answer. But the reason why this is here, I think, is to teach us that the justice of God is more merciful than the lawlessness of men. Let me say that again. The justice of God, the justice, getting what we deserve, is more merciful than the lawlessness of men. When humanity falls into lawlessness, 
We might think, we might start out engaging in lawlessness out of an act of compassion, out of an act of mercy. That's what we did in our country. So many times we abandoned the law of God. We abandoned the teachings of Christ because we wanted to be merciful, because we wanted to be compassionate. And yet again and again we see that you don't just engage in a little bit of lawlessness. It's progressive. And so you become more and more and more lawless. And to the point to where you end up with wickedness, evil. And so the wickedness of humanity is much, much worse. It is a much worse fate than the justice of God. And this is a stark lesson for us in our culture to learn today. There is evil that is perpetrated in our culture that is much worse then if we followed the Old Testament law, and I'm not saying that we need to exactly follow the Old Testament law because that was meant for Israel, but I'm saying here that God is so much more merciful in His law than we are today, even in our own kindness. And so we prove, and judges proves, the wisdom of Proverbs that says the compassion of the wicked is cruel. That's what the Proverbs teach. The compassion of the wicked is cruel. And that's what we see here in Judges. And that's what we see time and time again in our own culture. Rather than telling people the truth and letting them suffer a little bit with that truth, we lie to people and cause them to suffer throughout their entire life. We need to learn from this that we are not more merciful than God. We are not more righteous than God. We are not more loving than God. When we think we are, this is where we end up. We end up in the book of Judges. We end up with the kind of evil that was going on there. We are not better than God. We are not more just than God. We don't have a better solution than God. And whenever a people believe that they do, you will see it end up like this again and again and again. 